I don't think I can do justice uh, to uh, one hour of the basics of administrative law and how to run a fair hearing. Uh, I used to teach this, uh, this course um, at the University of Ottawa, and I would spend about 15, at least 15 hours, so three to four courses on what I'm going to try and deliver to you in about an hour. Uh, I will not go uh, through all the slides. There's, there's far too many. Uh, but so that you can understand uh, the process and uh, the requirements of a fair hearing. The way I uh, drafted uh, these slides is, is, is also as a guide to you. For those who are uh, panel members, if you do have issues or questions in relation to how to run a fair hearing, you can always go to these slides uh, on the topic that you're looking at and you will have the latest case um, and also the latest books that discuss that specific issue and go by going through those references, uh, you'll then be able to find the answer that is appropriate to your specific tribunal. And this, uh, the reason why there is no, you need a guideline to do this is because all tribunals are different. A hundred years ago, we did not have any administrative tribunals and now they are everywhere. Why is this? Because society is getting more and more complex. A hundred years ago, there was no airplanes. Now we need to have aviation rules and there is a, an administrative tribunal dealing with aviation matters. The same goes with food law. That did not exist a hundred years ago. Now we have the uh, Ministry or uh, Department of Health and we also have uh, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency who now have m m multiple requirements into how uh, food must be processed. And there is also now a tribunal, an administrative tribunal dealing with those rules. Uh, think of refugees, for example, a hundred years ago that did not exist. Now we have an immigration board that deals specifically with those issues. All those tribunals are there for different reasons, uh, and so procedural fairness would apply differently to all of them. It depends, one of the major criteria is to determine how the decision that you are going to render will affect specifically one person as opposed to a business, for example, what kind of interest that person has. Is it a personal interest or is it more of an, of an economic nature or a labor or an, or, an employment <coughs> or an employment nature? So all those need to be considered in determining how much fairness must be owed to that person as to uh, the uh, possibility of having a hearing. Procedural fairness of the, is the cornerstone, uh, cornerstone of Canadian administrative law. If it's not for procedural fairness, then there is no law. And procedural fairness normally has two specific rules. One is that you are allowed to have a hearing, and a hearing does not need to be oral. It can be written. And the other one is that the judge or the person that will make the decision has to be neutral. The person cannot be bias, biased in one way or another. Normally, administrative, administ, administrative tribunals will deal with matters that relate to government and to an individual. In those cases, you cannot have a decision maker that is biased in favor of the government or uh, of the individual that is before the tribunal. Otherwise, again, there is no law. In Cardinal v. Kent Institution, Justice Ledin of the Supreme Court uh, held that uh, there's a general common law principle, a duty of procedural fairness lying on every public authority making an administrative deci a decision, which is not a of a legislative nature, I'll come back to this, which affects the rights, privileges, or interests of an individual. Those three words are key here. What is at issue before the decision maker? Is it a right of a person? Is it a privilege? Or is it an interest? That needs to be determined, because if it is, if it is a right, normally uh, you will have greater procedural protection. For example, if I am a, uh, I'm the owner of a bar and I have a liquor license, I have the license. I have a right to have this license. If you want to revoke my license, then my procedural rights to defend my case will be greater than if I just try to establish a, 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 a bar and I'm seeking a liquor license. In this case, if I don't have it and I'm applying for it, then I'm applying to receive a privilege or an interest. In that sense, for, those, for the liquor board that, that determines if a, a liquor license will be granted, procedural fairness might be uh, lower 
than when you're trying.